It is Mal CC Hassops against MTW Damaga. Both these players are one and one apiece. And we have our last game on Daybreak. All good things must come to an end. The series has been very epic in the top right. We have the player who's been showing very strong passive play, but he did get out thunk there trying to defend his third. He is Dennis Schneider, also known as Hasu Hobbs from Mouse Sports as the Blue Protoss. In the bottom left-hand position as the Red Zerg, who has shown a very unorthodox style of ZVP. He is none other than Dima Flipchuck. AKA MTW Demaga. Who looks like Carmack. <laughs> Actually, you ever see that video of Carmack I, I, I trolling have, people? I, have. I love Carmack, man. He's great. And it's funny because Demaga and Carmack could both kick our butts. <laughs> because they're. Well, maybe maybe not you, but me. You underestimate uh, my power. I do. Actually, for those of you who don't know, Andre actually is like a black belt with red stripes. <laughs> <laughs> and purple stars yeah. <laughs> in judo. <laughs> yeah. Might be. Something like that. He, I always stop listening as soon as he starts saying, I used to do this. I did get promoted from white white belt to brown belt in two months. I was that Masters was awesome. League Jiu-Jitsu, so get out of here. Man. Of course, I've never actually really done that. But we do see that Hasu is scouting the MAGA, and uh, we'll see how he wrestles against the MAGA style. You like what I did there? Like what I did there? He looks like we'll see how he... Uh, fights against the Zergling Baneling style that Demog has been showing in EVP. What what do you think of this right now? The way he's been showing it in this series. Um I'm not sure. You know, there Okay, so Demaga he's been doing this this awkward style of ZVP. I think he's been trying to abuse Hassel out the second game. That's what was most apparent. I mean going up to seventy two drones was probably the the instant tell that hey Demog is just abusing Hasselhoff's. And I think that's why Hasselhoff's is trying to re-abuse. No, I'm sorry. Again, a forge first. I thought for sure Hasselhoff's was going for the Nexus versus this game. Um, okay, so. He's doing the same thing every single time. Hasselhoff's uh, cannot be altered, cannot be deterred. He's just going to do exactly the same thing every time. And I that's cool because Hasu, I mean, he's. this is how he reacts. And this makes me feel so justified because you were yelling at me because I was like, oh, I'm going to go Forge. And like, why go Forge first, man? You can go Nexus first. Exactly. But why? it's interesting because he's following it up with a Gateway and not a Cannon this time. And uh, he's also going to try to see if he can block the third yet again. So the same ex uh, three openings at this time, Hasso is getting an earlier Gateway. But it's just the, the, f the simple fact of why, why not go for the Fast Nexus. It's mm -hmm. just like a free opportunity, man. He's going to block the third, but it's not going to be up for much longer because that pylon gets cancelled. Of course, the four Zerglings, if you guys don't know at home, four Zerglings are the required amount of Zerglings you need to do enough DPS to take down a pylon before, you know, it can, it can make, it can yeah. build fast enough, you know, so it stays up there for a long period of time. So, always get four Zerglings whenever this beginning game's EVP is around, but, um, you know, Hasselhoff's just going to go the complete standard crown. Yeah, this is really interesting. I would think that he changes it up a little bit. We're playing a little bit more greedy, getting maybe a plus one, which is a possibility. But still, mm. I feel like Damaga is just going to abuse his opponent again. Get that quick 72 drones. Maybe not so quick, but so, uh, as quick as possible. Get 72 drones and then just Zerglings, Banelings, drop everything possible. You know, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say that I think Hasselhoff is gonna stick to the same thing he did. He's saving up his first hundred gas, same exact way as he did in game number one, where he gets warp gate and sentry. So, looks like it's gonna be the same thing for games one through three from Hasu. Now the question is whether Demaga is gonna use his first hundred gas on speed, or is he gonna try to do something else like maybe get a fast loop? I don't think so. I think he will go speed. He's favored this Zergling style, mm -hmm. the double upgrades plus one one, and. I don't think anything can really change him, but as I say that, he's mining more than 100. Oh, there it goes. Don't there it is. Okay. I was clicking on that spawning Interesting. pool. Interesting. So, yeah, we'll have the same exact thing coming out from him. One minor adjustment I would say for Demaga is if you're going 72 drones, get three macro hatches instead of only one. It sounds crazy, but it's <laughs> necessary. Well, because the whole idea of Zerglings and uh, Banelings is that they're so cheap. At least on the mineral side. Yes. And so you have an influx of minerals, and you don't have enough larva to spend. So the idea exactly. is having those macro hatcheries. You know, you should su be surprised, but Andre's been spending a lot of time playing Zerg, and he's been really able to dive into that. Well, not only have I been playing, I've been he's analyzing. been losing a lot of Zerg too. Hey, hey, I've been to analyzing tons <laughs> of players. Um, Sheth, Stefano, 
I've been analyzing Damaga, of course. And I've been seeing these styles. I actually haven't seen this style, him do oh. this style in a, a little bit, but. I like uh, I like how Hasu's putting his three additional gateways that he's been doing all series. You see how it's hugging the side of his, uh, his uh, just above his main base, and the reason why is because the Overlord usually comes at an angle of where the pylon is, right outside of his main. And the idea is he's going to be able to hide it for as long as possible, giving potential to maybe even killing the Overlord. Mm -hmm. And so Hasu, I just like that ni nice little touch there. Definitely. Well, it's interesting. We do have a pylon coming out into the middle of the map. It looks like this one probe is just milling around. Hasob's changing things up. Oh, wow. He's changing up things a lot. You know, I've we had completely ignored the fact that he actually did not get a sentry. He had the gas, but he actually went for a stalker. Now he's piled a lot of resources. In fact, he's saving up quite a bit of gas as well. We see the Maga going for the Bailey Nets, but he's trying to get the surround on the Zelt. The stalker does manage to get inside the choke, but killing off these units here for basically very, very cheap units. Yeah, and off of this, Damaga should be able to drone up quite a bit. That's a lot of momentum that you lose when you're Protoss. You need to keep the pressure on. As soon as it stops, you know at that point, Protoss really can't do a lot because they need to find a new foundation, a new starting point, a new place where you can start warping in units safely. You don't have that potential anymore, so we're going to see Hasselhoff just fall back quite a bit. You can see the robotics facility goes down, and he's going to put down Twilight Council as well. So he's just going straight up macro. That sucks because Damaga, let's look at that income tab. 54 Harvesters. I'm expecting a ton more drones coming up pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, he just hopped up to 64, and he's still making more drones. In the process, we see Hasu finally starting to burn a lot of that gas. But the idea is uh, he didn't get those sentries first. He got them later, so he doesn't have a lot of time invested in the sentries. So he doesn't have the stockpile of energy that he's used to having. In mm -hmm. fact, he's feeling so uncomfortable, he's putting a second cannon down just in case he needs it. Now, he is getting Blink, Hallucination, for scouting purposes as well as plus two. So he's going to be sitting back for a while as per standard Hasu play. But the Maga at the same time, he's finishing up plus one, plus one, and starting Ventral Sacks. So we're going to see the Aww, same yeah. type of drop play. I actually really like that drop play. I like play. it. A lot of the drop play that we used to see just went out. Um, I was actually talking to Golden Light about this, and he was saying, well, it's so much micro, it's hard to macro at the same time, and you lose all one fight, and all your overlords are gone. Protoss have a huge momentum shift where they just take control, and a lot of times you lose off of that. And You can speak great. Korean now? Well, <laughs> that's no, he did explain that to me. Of course, oh, okay. I, I'm kind of He's translating a little yeah. bit more for him. But, um, yeah, I mean, Golden said that's why he doesn't do that as much. But Damaga is showing that is still a very capable style. We're going to see him do some multi-pronged aggression. Ooh, at the third, and the natural is trying to see if he can go first round. Oh, he does manage to force the force fields back again, but these Banelings try to see if they can catch pros, but there's actually nothing here. Oh. He's just going to go, and actually no cancel at all because the Banes managed to take it out. The Zergans do get cleaned up, but Demaga got what he wanted, which is the force cancel. I guess not even the cancel, the force third is now not forced. I meant to deny. say something there, but... Denying <laughs> the third. Yeah, denying the third. Yeah. See, these Banelings are getting centrifugal hooks. He has plus two, plus two being researched, and Pneumatized Carapace has just been researched, so that is the Overlord speed. He will be able to do some drops. That will be very helpful because a lot of times, this is how it used to be. Sentries were really good, but how you counter that, instead of Infestors, it was drops, bailing drops. You just crash onto them, and they get, <laughs> they get devastated. There's nowhere to run. They're mm -hmm. too slow. Overlords are able to do a lot of damage. Um, since then, I mean, obviously, as I, as I was saying, it's changed quite a bit. We'll see if he's able to get some good hits with those Baneling drops. Yeah, Damaga does have that fourth base as his macro hatchet for now. Waiting for plus two, plus two. Uh, Centrifugal Hooks did just finish as well, so he can go for that timing right now. And oh, Hasa doesn't even go. really have anything defending that there other than a couple cannons. Fortunately for them, they are targeting down the right buildings, but the Zergan trying to go for what? Surround did not manage to get anything. <laughs> As Hasu looks like he's worried about defending his natural, but the Zergans do end up getting around. And a couple of force fields, uh -oh. actually lots uh -oh. of force fields putting put out here uh -oh. haphazardly. And Hasu, he looks like he will save it, but the Banes are trying to see if they can get in. <laughs> but the force fields do block it out. A great play here. The Overlord trying to come from behind does get sniped as well. So Dimaga coming from all different angles, but Hasu managed to save everything while taking minimal losses. Unfortunate for Dimaga, he really, really wow. blundered out there. 
And because that Hasto Ops is able to equalize a little bit, you can see those supply counts even now quite a bit. Now, Zerklings aren't really a great investment in terms of supply. It's actually really hard to keep up with your opponent, so that's why we see that a lot of the times. The other big problem about going Zergling Banelings, you have no meat to the army. All these trades are just that traits. You're always going to lose all your Zerglings. They're not cost efficient in that manner. So you have to make sure you are macroing up quite a bit. You can see the fourth base has been taken in the top left hand corner. We're also going to see multi drops coming up from Damaga. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Hasu is now has Archons. So Archons are a great sponge for Baneling damage. And Damaga has to be really, really cautious with how he does this. Especially because Hasu, again, he's been such a big proponent of probing really hard. He's at 70 probes on three base economy. So he is sitting very nicely. Damaga moving uh -oh. into the natural here. And will Damaga try to see if he can drop directly on the army? He also has a lot of Zerglings postured outside the third here, Andre. There we go, and the force fields start out. Now he should be blinking all of his units away. There it is, and the Archons will take most of the damage. <coughs> Great force field before all of those sentries do, in fact, die out. The third is okay. It looks like those Zerglings from the bottom are going to sweep in and do nothing. Look at that. Hassoff cleans everything up. The third, oh, no! A lot, oh, of Zerg, there's a lot of Banings, rather, detonating Gosh. on those probes and killing a lot. So a great play there from Damaga to kind of recover uh, his basically not doing any damage really to the army other than killing some sentries. But Hasu still seems to be pretty intact. He's still at 60 probes despite losing 19. And ah, man, Damaga is still not letting up with his aggression. His Greater Spire is on the way because during this whole time he was teching the Hive, mm -hmm. getting up his infestation pit uh, so he can get those upgrades as well. And right now he's working on plus three, plus three adrenal glands. But how much longer can he keep this up? Hasu seems to be taking less and less damage aside from that one drop of Banelings. Yeah, and probes are pretty inexpensive. The big units that Hasselhoff wants to save are the Archons, the Archons yeah. and the Stalkers. If he can keep those alive, he's able to deal with all the pro or all the Zerg arsenal that they're capable of doing. You can see, oh, look at this. Damage is actually going to be spotted over here. This one Zealot uh, spots out those Banelings being merged. But I don't think this one Overlord will be able to connect, seeing as there's Stalkers right outside. It just takes one, man. Banelings with plus two just... Uh, just basically dead and kill probes in one shot. It only takes one time. Though. One time, one time. One shot, one opportunity. Sees everything the Banelings ever wanted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Frodan, it looks like Demaga is just setting up, gearing up for those Broodlords. He has six Corruptors out in the field. He's just waiting also for his upgrades to kick in. The plus three, plus three. Of course, the adrenal glands are already finished. Hasselhoff, where does he actually go from here? I mean, you are the protest player. Um, what is he gunning for? I mean, he what are the he wants? He's getting that fleet beacon right now. He needs a mothership. If you see lots of Zerglings and Banelings, especially if they're dropping, you need a way to stop it. An easy way is to have uh, the overlords clumped up. And then you have like the Archons really take care of it. Also, Blink is really important. Um, he has to be really cautious for Fungals, because if Fungals land on the Stalkers, but even though he doesn't know that any Infestors are out, but the idea is he has to be really cautious about uh, uh, what Demaga's transitioning, because he knows Demaga's not being aggressive, so he has to be transitioning in some way, some form, and the choice this time from Demaga is Broodlords. He has six Infestors out onto the field, plus three, plus three about to finish as well, so Demaga's lining up a very sick timing here if he can hit before that Mothership comes out. The question is, can Hasselops get the required army composition to deal with this 200-200 army? Now, he will be pressing out. I don't know if I'm a big fan of having all these Broodlords out with just Zerglings company. Yes, he does have Infestors and Banelings, but still, these Zerglings aren't nearly as effective as you would think. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of just supply, I would much rather have a ton of Corruptors, a ton of Broodlords as well. Uh, additional Broodlords, I should say. But no, he's going it with just Zerklings, and we'll see if he's able to do any damage. These gateways are now becoming a hindrance. Yeah, to I mean, Hasso. the Broodlords can rain down fire. And keep in mind, even if the Mothership comes out, that doesn't mean Hasu's safe. He has to wait for Vortex Energy oh. to come up. And we do see that Hasu's moving down his ramp. Let's see if he can go for a, 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 he can go for a flank there. But Hasu, I mean, Damaga does see it, though, right? He should know where his army is. Yes, and it looks like Hasu Ops, is he going to go for a counterattack? No, he's not. He's going to swing him back around. <laughs> he has to save this third. That's 100%. He has to save the third. Drop in the top left of the main base coming in here. Don't think he'll be able to connect on anything. Nope. Down it goes. 
Well, he is trying to expand out to the center of the map. And keep in mind, the way the expansions work is that it has full mineral base there. So it's not reduced at all. The mothership is now arriving to the battle. Fungal lands on a huge amount of stalkers there. But no reinforcement from there. Just another fungal. As we do see the Brewers finally entering the battle. This is very tense. Dumaga realizes, oh, there's a mothership out. He knows how much energy it has as well. And wow, it does land another fungal. But does he have enough energy to vortex? He still needs 15 seconds here. Yes, if he can keep that mothership alive, he'll be in a great position. It looks like these broodlords are going to mm. town on all these units. Can I get the mothership? Oh my god, it's just forever. It feels like an eternity until that mothership is able to vortex. Does he have... No, he doesn't have Neural Parasite, so not to worry. He's bundling all his broodlords. He's trying to separate some of them out. He realizes right now the energy is now. He does get three broodlords sucked up here, but the Roach is coming for oh. a flank. The blink forward means that the Banes can now hit the Stalkers as Hasu isn't cutting at all. The Fungal on the Stalkers. Hasu's supply now is dropped below 100, now in the 70s. The manga still staying strong. Broodlords arrive back to the battlefield, but there's only two Archons, and with a brief explosion, Hasu the only thing left back are a couple stalkers and the mothership. And Hasuab says, "Grats, wow. GG, and Demaga is gonna take it 2-1, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to him. You can see the silhouette of Demaga, pretty handsome. <laughs> <laughs> but man, was that <laughs> so a great dashing. game! <laughs> Such a dashing silhouette. Great game coming out from Mr. Demaga. I do have to say, at that end." Hasuops was not able to refuel because there was a yeah. big Baneling explosion at the natural. Banelings killed Ooh, all okay, the probes good catch, there. Good catch. So, you know, obviously you can't refuel fuel your army. You can't do anything. Damaga is going to keep going in with those waves and waves and waves. That's and actually it looks impressive. Like that, uh, that style, <laughs> the Zerkling Baneling style, really cool style from Damaga. Yeah, I didn't even catch that. Damaga was microwaving his army, fungling everything, moving his Brewlords, splitting them, making roaches and sending them, injecting, spreading his creep, and dropping Banelings. Damaga. He was actually playing at an incredible amount of APM. I think it was around 400 during the actual battle. So crazy, crazy play out of Demaga. Unfortunately, we don't have an interview with him. We know you guys have been loving that oh. so far. But uh, we can definitely try to see if we can catch him next time. We will try to see if we can get him one time live mm -hmm. uh, for an actual play so we can interview him. So, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it. A big thanks to GameMinder for that game. They are one of our sponsors. Go check them out on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, but that being said, congratulations to Baga. 2-1 yep. win for him. And that actually concludes the day. So we're going to go to a short break, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, we have some closing words and a couple of announcements. So don't go anywhere. NASL will be back after this.